Okay. So for those who don't know, I'm Amy Conti. And um, whether you've been with us all day or just got here, we're so glad you're here. And I have somebody really special to introduce. He's an amazing doctor in town who works for Millennium Physicians Group. And he is here to talk about some great information. So I have Dr. Ruwanu. So please give him a warm welcome. Good afternoon. All right. Well, I was asked to uh, do a small uh, presentation in regards to one of the most common problems uh, we encounter nowadays in uh, the geriatric population or senior citizens, especially in nursing facilities where um, a good portion of our senior citizens spend the last uh, few years of their life. And it's about the urinary tract infections and the effect that the urinary tract infections have on the brains of a human being. Okay. Okay. Basically, if you look at it, there is uh, a high incidence of urinary tract infections. Basically, around 10% of women will have a urinary tract infection after age 80 uh, at any given year. Uh, males are usually half of those. Now, we have a simple question that we like to ask. Is a urinary tract infection the end or is something that will be prevented? And I hope that we can answer those questions today. Basically, older individuals are at higher risk of developing urinary tract infections. Simple reasons are when we get older, our body parts don't work as good as they did. Our immune system um, usually goes um, down and it prevents us from fighting bacteria and fungal infections as good as we should. Uh, there is a lot of uh, anatomical changes, things that happen in our skin, on our uh, body parts in general, that uh, will predispose us. Women are always more predisposed than men's, basically because the way they got makers, okay? Now, one of the bigger things that um, I realized that we can, uh, we see in the nursing facilities is that um, the cognition is the biggest factor that we have into making a person more, pro uh, more likely to have a urinary tract infection. Now, one of the other problems is communication. Patient uh, has lower con uh, cognition, is unable to communicate properly the symptoms, what they feel. Then we do have to use a lot of uh, techniques in order to try to identify then as you can see, in um, the geriatric population, it's very difficult to make the diagnosis of urinary tract infection because as you're gonna see later, not the symptoms are not as typical as you can find in a person that is 20 years old. Um, certain health conditions will make us more propense to develop these urinary tract infections. Um, diabetes, as an example, is one of the biggest factors, and we know that we're having in America uh, basically a tremendous diabetes epidemia. Uh, there is a lot of uh, issues that happen with diabetes. It is one of the biggest uh, diseases that will depress your immune system, and if you already have a depressed immune system secondary to age, then on top of that you develop diabetes, Kidney stones also predispose to re keep fluid into the ureters and the kidneys, and also that predispose uh, the person to have urinary tract infections. Those, as you can read there, those are universal symptoms of urinary tract infections. You can see 
uh, urina uh, burning to urination. You can have a cloudy urine. You can have back pain on, on, your low, on, on the lower back, basically. But there is also rectal pain can happen. Uh, there is a lot of uh, situations, uh, including hygiene, that will predispose us to have one or other of these symptoms. Now, do these are the urinary tract infection symptoms, confusion, um, disorientation, agitation, poor moral skills. When you have somebody who may have confusion, but normally is, may have a baseline dementia or memory problem, but is able to perform the activities of daily living, they go to the bathroom, they eat, and now they're confused, they don't know if they're going into the bathroom or they're going into the closet, that is a problem. That's a trigger. Um, some people cannot tell you what the symptoms are, and then they become agitated because they feel that they need to urinate. They're having pain, but they cannot express themselves. Falls. It's one of the most common things we see. If you go to the emergency room with a fall, the first thing that the emergency room team is going to do is a urinary um, urinalysis, looking for a potential urinary tract infection. And depression is one of the biggest also, as you can tell, if you're confused, if you don't know what's going on, some people get agitated, some people get more into the depression side. Now, there is a very common thing that I would like you to understand. Not all bacteria in the urine is a urinary tract infection. In order to make the diagnosis of urinary tract infections, we should have clinical symptoms. Um, trust me, it's not as easy as, um, you know, when you read it on the book or when you read the signs and symptoms. You have to put a lot of information together. Um, but once you collect a urine sample and submit it for culture, you may see in the urine sample bacteria. That does not mean that the person has a urinary tract infection. Up to 50% of women in nursing homes may have asymptomatic bacteriuria. They may be confused, but they may be confused for a different reason. Then you get a urine sample, now you have bacteria, then a lot of clinicians will be inclined in to start the antibiotics at that time. I just want to make sure that you understand that there is no clinical benefits of providing antibiotics for asymptomatic bacteriuria. Basically, what we're, we'll be doing is creating more problems. We will, uh, antibiotics are very good when they are needed. They are very dangerous when they are not. There is multiple complications. Few of them, uh, Bactrin, one of the most common ones that we use for urinary tract infections, is very strong on the kidneys. The kidneys does not work as good once you're giving Bactrin. Therefore, drinking a lot of fluids when that antibiotic has been given is important. Um, ciprofloxacin, for example, um, one of the things that we mentioned before is poor motile skills, which is going to trigger the person to fall. Ciprofloxacin will make your tendons weaker. They can be broken on, on a fall. Then, uh, and there is another one called Clostridium difficile colitis, which is an infection that we face a lot uh, and is, um, is potentially lethal. Then is a, those are the good reasons, or a few samples of reasons, why not use antibiotics unless we really have to. Now, the Infectious Disease Society of America has certain criteria um, for us to follow. And one of the things they do recommend is not to uh, do routine urinalysis or urine cultures on asymptomatic individuals. A lot of the times we get calls from the office and the first thing we get is, doc, I feel that I have in a urinary tract infection. Okay, do you have fever? No. Are you having any back pain? No. Are you confused? Obviously no, is able to call. Are you having any burning? Eh, a little bit. That that's very vague, then those patients, you could run a urine test depending on your levels of suspicion, but as a rule, you don't have to do that. Usually drinking water for the next few days will get rid of those symptoms. Now, different story. If the person has fever, 
if the person tells you that the urine is really cloudy, those are warning signs. You have to seek medical attention uh, quickly, okay? Now, there is a big dil dilemma that we, we use. We have to do every time to use those criteria. There is uh, guidelines that allows to make uh, those decisions. Uh, but if you have a person that you're suspecting that they may have a bladder infection, a urinalysis will be uh, indicated. Now, urinary tract infections could be from bladder problems or bladder infections, it's called cystitis, or full-blown pyelonephritis, which is once the kidney is involved and the infection has reached higher levels. That's usually very dangerous. You can have blood uh, bacteria uh, moving into the bloodstream, and that is, uh, again, fairly dangerous. Those are the signs uh, that we can, um, that we use uh, as a rule for bladder infections. Fever, temperature of 100.5 or greater, uh, worsening of the urinary incontinence or frequency or urgency, um, burning, acute dysuria, burning to urination, that's the most common uh, sign. Uh, suprapubic tenderness, basically in the low abdomen, also um, pain on the lower back, but there is other, uh, other symptoms that include bleeding, include cloudy urine, include fever, include uh, um, rectal pain, okay? Now, therapeutic antibiotic trials are not recommended. There is a lot of toxicity. We already touched on that. Now, as we age, we all have difficulties on um, retain certain abilities. That decreases the ability to take care of ourselves. Hygiene is very important and is usually a compromise, okay? A lot of the uh, senior citizens that live in nursing facilities depend on caregivers or um, staff to provide care for them, including hygiene, nutrition, hydration. Um, now, you got to remember, urinary tract infections, and I want you to always remember this, sudden onset of confusion is very important. When a person gets confused, you have to look for a reason. Now, the most common reason for confusion, believe it or not, especially in nursing facilities, is lack of fluid intake, is dehydration. Then we mentioned before, hydration is important to prevent bladder infections, therefore, you get a person that starts with a bladder with a confusion because they have not been eating or drinking properly. Now, why we don't eat and drink properly? Again, our body deteriorates with age. We don't feel as thirsty as we once did. We could be doing physical activities. We could be eating salty food, but the thirst is not there as much because the mouth receptors are uh, not functioning properly. Therefore, very easy to be to have some mild dehydration, get a little bit of confusion, develop the bladder infection. Now we have a, bi a bigger problem in our hands. Then the prevention is always the most important thing to do. Okay. Now we have um, at home we have uh, an elderly um, demented patient, but is able to function, is able to eat, bath, go to the to go to the bathroom, and now this person is withdrawing. Is is no, doesn't want to get out of the room. That is a, a concerning sign. And one of the things that we need to look for or keep in mind is a potential for a urinary tract infection. Now, what is the main thing that we should do? One word, hydration. Now, why does the brain get so much effect of bladder infections? Well, when you get a urinary tract infection, there is a lot of toxins that the bacteria produce. These toxins accumulate in your blood. Your kidneys are not as efficient as getting rid of the toxins, uh, plus now they are fighting an infection. Therefore, those toxins levels in the blood are, are going to provide the perfect ground for a confusion. And then when that confusion comes, the person doesn't drink or eat as properly then one th it's like a snowball effect. One thing will get uh, to the other. Um, 
Okay, now we keep it fairly uh, short. I was asked to keep it as, as short as possible and uh, we'll be in the conf uh, consultation room. Uh, if anybody has any particular questions, anything else that you guys want to uh, ask will be um, available there for, for the questions, okay? Thank you much.